Hello, I'm Otto, and I'm going to just talk about uh, a Chinese vase. To give you some tips, I'm not an expert, but I'm, I'm a dealer and I do buy and sell them, and I will try and get across some, some tips. The, the, the main thing you have to look for when you're buying a Chinese vase is to, is to determine whether it's slip cast or handmade. This one is handmade because there are finger marks visible in concentric rings all the way up the side and all the way down as far as you can see. You can have those put in, so be careful. You have to rely on other things as well. So it's handmade. If it was slip cast, it would have been made in a plaster cast. The plaster cast would have had two sides, would have been clamped together with an open top. We would have poured into the void a liquid a slurry, liquefied pottery. And the whole void would have been filled to the top with this liquefied slurry. There would be no central uh, reverse mould, if you like, uh, rather like when you make a teapot. Because if you have a teapot, you have a, an inner mould, you, you can't pull it out of the lid. So it's made like an Easter egg is made. The slip goes in, the, the edge of, of the uh, wet clay dries or solidifies because it's near the plaster which draws the moisture out. And after about 10 minutes, it's solid enough for the remaining slip to be poured away or on a very big pot, and uh, there'll be a tap on the bottom of the mould. So, if it's a slip cast, it's mass produced, or not, some of them are not mass produced, some of them are made carefully, but it's a different thing. And when I buy vases, pairs of vases, I often look at the, the size, if, if the, the top is exactly the same height. The 99% of them are slip cast. Uh, it's very hard to make two identical ones by hand. Uh, they can be the same height, but you might find the waste is in a different area. So they vary. So it's just a tip. If it's slip cast with the porcelain, then uh, visually the, clay, the, the pottery will, will have a similar shine to it. Uh, I think on this occasion, this porcelain they've used to make this isn't a particularly white one. It's quite a heavy, stoneware-like porcelain. In fact, I do think it might be stoneware, but I think it is porcelain. This bit is uh, where you get to see the clay up close. It's very, very, very fine. So the painting is non-transfer. The uh, whole thing is painted by hand. These are not the same in duplicate, not the transfers, each painted by hand from memory and they are be beautiful, those leaves. Sometimes you see the leaves on the top of jars, so it's a, not a new design. This is two, two birds on a fence, on a bridge. I think these are chrysanthemum. There's a butterfly, there's another bird, another butterfly. And that more paints over the glaze. So the, the effect is you see the globs of paint in the light. You see that it's not three-dimensional, but you, it's not like a transfer. Not only is it not like a transfer and it's not repetitive, it's the texture is not like a transfer. The actual texture of the vase is slightly lumpy. The, the texture of the flat part of the vase has a semi-orange peely sort of like earth finish, which is a, is a desirable thing. There is a two bands of blue which have been put on, a band here in blue, two bands there, and there are three characters which are hand painted. They're not stickers, they're not impressed, they're not transfer. And this was made, as I say, on a, on a potter's wheel. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So I hope that's been interesting. A lot of the Chinese has been bought by the, the Chinese buyers. They consider the stock in America and England a very reliable place to buy their pottery. Uh, they feel in China that it is more likely to be fake if they buy it in China from the Chinese antique shop. There's so much antique China in England that they like to come to London to buy their Chinese pottery and there are, there are special viewings held in London by dealers and auctioneers as a Chinese pottery week and they all come over together, the buyers and they look at all the stuff. So it's a huge thing and the Chinese budget is far beyond what anyone in England would consider a large budget. I mean it's the value of the very expensive pots to them is pocket money and they buy a great deal of it and it drives the market. So Malta, this is a Malta, um, 
I would say it's more Japanese pottery than Chinese pottery, and the local market isn't too interested in this. This is a fur really a sort of furnishings piece. I would say it's 1940, 1950, 1960, based on a, obviously a much, much older design. Uh, there are collectors in, in Malta who collect the really good antique stuff, and some of them you know, use it still. So, so it has got a place in Malta, but I think the market this one probably will be back home in England. I hope that's been interesting. I'm sorry I'm not a real expert, but I, you know, I'm a keen dealer and do get to handle it. There's no substitute for handling it, picking it up and feeling happy it is. And if you're a collector, you can have a collection and you can observe it in different lights and get away from it and think about it and come back another time. You can compare it with the other ones you have. And it's, it's, this act, it's, it's the act of handling them and revisiting them and comparing them, that's when you start to, to get a, a, develop a sixth sense. And if you go to the sale rooms and shops and, and handle the stuff and do a bit of buying and selling, there's no substitute for putting your money where your mouth is and buying this stuff. Um, and it, it gives you another dimension. You're not, you're not going to want to buy something that's wrong. And it, for, it forces you to, to learn about it. It forces you to, to make decisions on it. If you buy from a dealer, you you have a um, very safe way of buying Chinese pottery. Uh, if you buy it from an auctioneer, the, the, your time to think about it is compressed. You have to make a snap decision on whether it is uh, what you want or not. And when you're buying a sale room, you have to be careful about damage while it's in the sale room. You have to be careful about lighting because you sometimes don't get the opportunity to look at things very well. But uh, so you have a range a range of places. You can inherit it, you can buy it in sale rooms, you can buy it off dealers, and there, there is still a lot around, and I, I think it's a good investment. And as I say, I keep saying it, I'm going to say it one more time, handling it is, is, is the thing. If you want to learn about it, handle the stuff, look at it, spend time with it. Thanks for looking.